Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your mindfulness coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ronald Johnson, mindfulness coach and NLP practitioner, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And we're talking to someone that's on the other side of the world the first time on Life's a Shuffle. Most people we kind of talk to are in America somewhere. That means California, New York, Florida, Chicago, wherever it may be. This person is coming all the way from Africa a place I'm going to visit because I've watched a lot of National Geographic. So I want to visit somewhere in Africa. And he's going to be a special guest for us. He's going to tell about his story because we got to connect on an emotional, spiritual level now at this point. Mario Lanzarote, take it away, buddy. It's your mic, it's all yours. Ron, thank you so much. It's a, like my mentor Les Brown used to say, it's a plum pleasing pleasure to be with both of you, Gloria and Ron. Um, thank you very much for having me. I'm so excited about the, the conversation that we're about to have. I know it's going to be powerful and legendary, and I have no doubt whoever is tuning in, you better listen until the very end because there's going to be some wisdom nuggets for you, practical steps to make your life juicier, better, healthier, and more successful. Awesome. So before we really hop into the meat, like you said, we never have a script, but I want, um, just like you shared us before we start recording, kind of talk about your story. Like who, who is Mario? Hmm. Yes, that's a great I question. I laugh there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so- sometimes, uh, sometimes I ask myself that question uh, as well, because, you know, the, the more I tap into the realms of consciousness, and the more I expand my level of awareness of life, the more the character Mario fades away. And then I say this in a, in a very positive way. I don't say this in a like, oh my God, I'm losing myself. Um, but, you know, this is not how it all started. How it all started, you know, was uh, me after high school, um, not knowing where my life would go and uh, just going after what society deems is is a good life is a successful life and so i watched the movie catch me if you can um with leonardo dicaprio and was inspired by his role as the pilot and how he was smoothly you know with all the ladies and just and just speaking his way through life and so effortless and i was like man this this is amazing i want that too so i decided to become a pilot and uh that's not usually the reason why you decide to become a pilot. You you know, you should have some sort of passion for technology, for aviation. I had none of that, zero. I just had a lot of a lot of energy and a and a and a good natural ability to to be an actor. And so I, you know, I worked really, really hard to get into the most prestigious airline in Europe, which is Lufthansa. And I passed all the tests. And as I shared with you earlier, 95% of all the people that uh, apply fail. And if you fail at any stage of the test, you can never reapply again for life. So I put all my cards in one deck and uh, it worked out. You know, I was admitted and I got in. And then at the time that I was admitted, I had a car accident and I developed a slip disc because of the car accident. 
And that led to me being in chronic pain pretty much 24-7. I couldn't sleep, sit, or stand without pain. When I was in class, I was in pain. You know, And I started taking pain, uh, pain meds because the treatments weren't helping. And those pain meds made me fall asleep. So I was sitting there in class, you know, with all of the guilt and the shame because I didn't tell anyone about this. You know, I didn't want people to see me in this light because I... You know, I thought, you know, vulnerability is a, is a big weakness, especially when you're surrounded by all these alpha males, uh, top dog. Uh, and they were all like, come on, we're here. We're going to do this. And, you know, I didn't feel I didn't feel this was my my place. And I realized that very quickly that I had made a wrong choice of career. And the problem for me was that I didn't want to admit that because my family was so proud of me and they were so happy that I made it. And everyone was like, wow, dude, you're killing it. I can't believe it. It's amazing. So happy for you. And I was like, huh, yeah, I'm not really happy here, but I don't want to disappoint you. So I, you know, just pushed myself deeper and deeper into it. And on top of the chronic pain, I became depressed. Uh, I started developing suicidal thoughts. I came very close. And one day, you know, I was faced with the choice, either you're going to do it now or you're going to change your life. And that came after I listened to people like Tony Robbins and Les Brown, who opened me to the world of possibility, who opened me to the world of there's another choice out there for you. And that's totally OK. And that helped me then quit, quit this career to go out into the world and explore who is Mario, you know? And then I went to Cape Town, to South Africa, to stay with my sister and my brother-in-law. And I started started regaining my sense of curiosity for nature and for things outside of the norm. And then I went back and then started studying in Berlin and started studied fashion management and did internships there. Uh, both of them led me to uh, becoming a partner at the company. The latter one led me to New York City, where I also went from intern to partner at a custom shoe startup, which I then took over. And then my partner and I, we sold it actually two years ago. And so I lived four years in New York uh, and, you know, did the classical the hustle, not knowing where to go, not knowing how to make uh, to, to, to work in the country without a visa, you know, and I just came with a piece of luggage and had a lot of faith and confidence and said, this is going to work out. You know, I don't know how, but it's going to work out. And, you know, I had a lot of months where it was just like surviving, surviving, you know, I had to ration my, my food uh, budget. Uh, and, and I remember there were days where it was just rice and beans, you know, uh, and on the shopping list because I wanted to save money. And, but all of that was just amazing because it, it taught me so much and it, helped me see myself from so many different perspectives. I mean, just one thing, you know, one of my passions today is meditation. I've been meditating for seven years straight without interruption uh, pretty much every day. Um, and I learned that in New York. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of nature today. I love hiking just like you, Ron. Um, I love being in nature. Um, I'm very curious about all of the things that expand your sense of self and self uh, and, and sense of consciousness. Um, I'm, I love working out. Uh, I love, I'm, I'm vegan. I love vegan food. Um, I love traveling. I love diversity. I love stories of people that make a comeback. Um, and all of that led me to where I am now, which is empowering women, um, empowering female entrepreneurs, because I think that women hold the key to the future. Uh, men play a equally important part, but I think now is the time for female leaders to step up. And uh, I'm sure we're going to dive into that a little bit as well. Yeah, man. Great, wow. great story to share. And I really appreciate Sarah sharing it again. Um, it just sounds so, it sounds like a, a typical book, right? You open a book, you kind of yeah. give you some outline and hearing your story about earlier, especially the fact that you want it to be somebody you want to be somebody in life and you say okay i think you said earlier before we hopped, uh, hopped on the mic that you want to make money you want to make it fast exactly so what i have to do to make a lot of money because i want to make it fast so with that being said now i'm going to ask you two questions um are you the only child no so you have other siblings right are the youngest yes. or the oldest the middle? Okay. i am the youngest of my biological siblings um so i grew up with my sister she's eight years older than me and then my, my mom remarried and I have a stepbrother and my 
Italian father is a, was quite busy <laughs> into his, uh, <laughs> into his uh, later life. So I still have a younger brother who I love dearly. Um, but yeah, there's a, there was a mixture. I was not a lone child. So like okay. a Brady Bunch. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so what came the idea of making money fast? Like why did you want to make money fast? Great question. Well, I think, you know, my parents pretty much came from nothing. My father being an immigrant in, in Germany uh, had quite a difficult time in the beginning uh, because the German Germany wasn't as open culturally. Um, and he was often seen as, yeah, as like someone who would take away, who's taking away work and taking away beautiful women, you know, that there was like all these stereotypes lying around. But my mom and my dad, started with pretty much nothing and then they built their own restaurant and they made great money you know we were like not like rich but like good middle class and you know back in the days then middle class meant something today it's like middle class is like almost you're poor um and i saw that how important it was to make money you know because you, when you come from nothing and then you you have something you also don't want to lose it you know you have a lot of a lot of attachment in, uh, with that and so i saw these role models around me and and for me it was always about you know if you make money you're successful you know that means you're you're living a good life you're doing things right and also in germany that's also kind of it's similar to to America, you know. You're you're that's what you're taught, you know. You're you get a good job, you get a safe job, get a good education, get married, have some kids, and make sure that you have enough money to be safe. And that's that was implanted into my mind. You know what? And, and that comes from the NLP is that so as a kid, you got loaded this programming of okay, I don't like to struggle. In order to maintain a safe, like you kept saying safe and prosperous life and the form of success by your peers or people around you, it's like, okay, if I got a pocket full of money, if I have a nice car, that's success. And since you had coined, I guess not coined, I guess since you had that information, how impactful was it to your life? Oh, big time. I mean, I mean do you mean the information today or back then? Back then. Back then, I mean, it was it was the driving force for me because I, what I made it mean then was that when you're successful, you can fix a lot of things in life, you know. And I experienced a lot of drama around me in life, and you know, with uh, when you rise up the ranks, coming from having very little to having enough. Um, for me, it was like, oh, when I have that, I'm a, I can help people. I can help my own family. You know, I can do things with that. I, it gets me a sense of, sense of uh, belonging in the world. And it did everything for me. You know, I classify as a high achiever. And so everything in my young life was about winning, was about being right, being the first, um, being the most, the best looking, having the best girlfriend. It was always about having the best. You know, being the best. And that, of course, came from a profound sense of scarcity inside of me because only when I was the best could I tell myself that I'm good enough. And that colored every area of my life, every aspect of my life. Also, when you say, you know, I struggled a lot with my own body image. I wasn't overweight, none of that. You know, if people would look at me and say, yeah, you know, perfectly normally, good, you know, fairly good looking young boy, healthy, strong body. But I would look at myself and think like, Ugh, I don't have a six pack. I have a little bit of extra belly fat here. That's, oh no, that's not nice. I need more muscle. So I was, you know, I was very, very self-conscious of my body image as well. And it was all driven again, you know, once you have the six pack, then you'll be good enough. And so every aspect of my life was co covered in the through the lens of I'm not enough. So your limiting belief of I'm not enough, I'm never good enough, I won't be good enough is what drove you to Massively. Yeah. And that uh, that part, I mean, it sounded like, you know, you were growing up with um with wonderful parents who was raising you. And if we go back then again, go back in time of not being good enough, what was that? Where did that come from as, as a young child? How, how did that come up for you? Yeah. I mean, we, we take on the habits and the behavior uh, unconsciously from, from what we see and observe from, from our parents. And so, 
it came from my parents and it came from their parents and their and their parents and, and on and on and on it goes until you know we go back to i don't know what generation maybe the first world war um but it was definitely given uh, to me by what i was observing you know and then plus plus outside of my own family when you in the western world you look at the media landscape everything is based on lack everything is based on you're only be good enough if you look this way I mean, just look at what women are are receiving on a daily basis. Buy this makeup, buy this cream, uh, get this hair product. When you do this, you'll feel beautiful. You'll feel slim and sexy and amazing. And it's all based on you need this. If you don't have this, you're you're not complete. No, it's not like telling you like, hey, who you are is amazing and beautiful. And here's a product that you would really appreciate because it was would expand on you. But, you know, you don't need it. So obviously marketing doesn't work this way in, in our world. So, you know, all of that coming together, giving me this, and, and, and plus that, because I had a, a multicultural background, the thing for me was I never quite identified as German when I was living in Germany. And I also never quite identified as Italian when I was living in Italy. So I al- always had this sense of like, I don't belong here. There was always something missing inside of me. And, you know, today I live in Africa uh, and I feel more at home here than ever than I have ever in my whole life. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the combination of all those things, you know, just added so much to my way of viewing myself and the world. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's so it's the society, the kind of society that we live in. Right. I mean, you mentioned about um, about women. You know, you, it's, it's, what do you call this? It's the, we see how we live in the consumer society, which means that let's say we need to buy stuff. And the easiest way to sell is, you know, to tell us that we're not enough. So you're looking at like for women makeup, right? Like you mentioned makeup. So it's like buying makeup because that's telling the, the consumers is telling the women you're not enough. You don't, you don't look good enough unless you put on this makeup. So they buy it. Right. So just like men buying car, if you buy a, if you have a nice car, maybe you'll get good girls. You get pretty right. women, right? you know, um, <laughs> another example would be bra. If you buy a certain bra, maybe you'll get guys looking at you. Exactly. So it's, it, again, and we go back to what we see in the society, what we see nowadays in social media as well, right? And um, and I don't know if, if I want to say those are just lies, but it's what we looked at, what we believe that maybe those will make us feel better, even if it's really not us deep down. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean... I mean, you 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 touched on something there. I I would say that those are lies um, because they're they're created on a false narrative, right? They are they're all part of this mechanistical Newtonian way of of looking at life. It's all uh, linear. It's like you do um, you do a a will lead you to b. You know, it's like you buy the makeup. You'll be beautiful. Being beautiful will attract a beautiful man or now a woman. You know, that's more accepted now. But let's say a man. And then uh, attracting a beautiful man will lead to having some children. And that will lead to having a good life. You know, it's all like bum, 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 bum. But life doesn't work this way. You know, life is not linear in that sense. It's like that's where the the the, the quantum um, mechanistic view of the world comes in, you know, quantum physics, how everything is connected at the same time, how, you know, human beings, when you, when you walk into a room and you are high on life, you know, you're vibrating, you're smiling, you're feeling great. People are going to turn around and look at you without them knowing that, Oh, there's someone coming in. They just feel that. And we're not presented that world, that view of the world. You know, we're shown this, this, this very oversimplified version of the world. And, you know, so many people just don't fit into that. You know, just the, take the school system. In the school system in the Western world, in my, in my view, is complete BS. You know, it worked at one time when, when it was developed by, you know, the, the likes of the Rockefellers who needed factory workers, um, who said that, kind of, we need to build our economy. And it, was, it, it made sense at the time, you know, because, you know, it, was, it brought great prosperity, growth, advancements. But now it's still there and it's outdated. You know, the idea that you put a child into a, a standardized system 
is just destructive in so many ways. And that's how I felt all the time. You know, I, I, I really, I was one of the few kids in school. I still remember this that said all the time, man, I can't wait for this for this bullshit to be sorry to for cursing. <laughs> oh, that's okay here. Uh, yes. Otherwise, oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't wait for this to be over. There's like I just want to go, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, we're gonna miss it." I'm like, "Oh guys, you have no idea what's out there, the real world." And I never felt I never felt seen in that system, you know. And that's why for me, the high achiever came through. It's like I'm gonna make myself seen by being the best. You watch me, people. And of course, that was coming from a place of like deep, deep, deep sadness, you know, and mm-hmm. I was ma- masquerading it as, as like all men do uh, with like, look at me, I'm the tough guy, you know, look at me, I got the car, I got the bank, I got the girls, what are you going to do? But on the inside, you still have no idea who you are. And that's the, the, the story of millions, if not billions of people nowadays still. Yeah, so we do things to... Make us stop feeling shitty. Mm-hmm. Basically. Exactly. You know, I, I thought when you talk about school system, like I never really fed into this, fit into the school system. I just never want to be there. I want to do something else in my life. And hearing you talk about your story, I'm like, man, it makes so much sense now because you're right. Our, our school system, it's extremely outdated. It, it, I mean, let's take, for example, the, the mundane things to, let's say, balance your checkbook. Uh, learn credit, learn, at least in the Western world, you have to apply for credit. Credit is a big thing out here. Right. Credit cards, home loans, whatever. We're not taught as kids how to manage credit. Yeah. If, if you want, and if that's how society wants us to live, we have to live, you know, what did Einstein say? We're, we're past, the future, and the present at one point, right? So in order to get those things, you have to think in the future, but we don't teach our kids to think in the future. So we say, okay, well, it's linear. You go to first grade, kindergarten, first grade, you go to high school, go to college, get a job, you get married, you have a kid, and then you just die. That's just, right. that's it. <laughs> right. And yeah. I'm like, dang, you know, you know, I, I grew up Jehovah's Witness and in religion, and especially Jehovah's Witness, it teaches well, the world around us is extremely bad and you want no part of the world. So anybody that's not Jehovah's Witness or anybody that's not believing in this faith, anybody, okay. Do not associate with them because they always said the scripture, bad association pulls useful habits. So now when it's been creating as a kid, everybody around you is, okay, he's a Christian, he's a Muslim, or he's whatever, but he's bad. He's not Jewish witness. He needs to be like me. So we create these, these scarcity paradigms, right, which mm. don't really help anybody. Like I never seen someone, I, I never met someone that died. Come back to life, like die, dead, they're buried, they're cremated, whatever. Come back and say, Ron, you know what? Death is really good on the other side. See, we, we're, we're not in taught in society to get busy living. And, and I don't mean like living like we, we were really taught get busy dying in the sense that you, yes. if you don't have this, this makeup, this fast Ferrari, this good body, the vacation, the money, the credit cards, whatever, you, you're not you're going to die. You're not going to be successful. And I always teach now, I heard it from um, Get Busy Living, Get Busy Dying was from this movie called Shawshank Redemption with I Morgan Freeman. And man, I'm I'm getting busy on living. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to figure it out. It's all about get mm. busy living. Because religion taught me, no, no, you're going to die. So here's the thing is, you can do what Jehovah says in the Bible. And if you do that, you'll be able to go to the new world, the new order. Right. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. Well, it's a man-made version of what paradise we, we think paradise should be. Yeah, we don't know. Paradise is now what we're living. Exactly. So that's so yeah. true. <clears throat> I have a question, um, but before I move on to this question, just wanted to touch something on the school system. Um, I think the school system have changed though from when we're all growing up. Um, I know, like balancing now, they're teaching the kids now how to balance. How to balance a checkbook? Okay, I, I I work for a school, and I was having a conversation with the um, one of the teachers. Is that we were laughing about this because we said, okay, we're teach, you know, they're being taught how to balance a checkbook, but as when they get older, checks will no longer be. It, it will probably be obsolete. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're not even right. going to know, but right. they are being taught how to balance um, money. Like if they have money in the bank, their credit. 
So that's, I think, one of the changes I've seen because even I didn't have that when I was, you know, in high school. And when I went to college, I don't remember learning or balancing money in a bank or credit. And then I wanted, so that's, and then I wanted to go back to Mario's story on, I know that you mentioned you were suicidal at one point. I just wanted to ask, um, when you've decided that one day you said, I either make it or I don't, what woke you up from taking this path where you are now? Mm, Well, what woke me up? I mean, this this is a very delicate topic, of course. Um, and people listening to this right now, um, you know, it's, it's a very, very narrow and fine line that you're walking because one day you can be, you know, feeling good, thinking you're through it, it's all done. The next day you're back, back again. And for me, what really helped me was the, the realization that it was me that created this way of looking at my life. You know, I, I found out about belief systems and I didn't know what a belief system was. I just, I was just living my life. And I thought, okay, if I mess this up, I'm done. You know, I might as well take my life. What, what's the point? You know, I'm, I'm not succeeding at this life path here. This is the only path there is for me. And when I then listened, as I said earlier, to people like Tony Robbins and Les Brown, they opened me up to a new perspective. And that perspective is it's possible. But just to believe that it's possible already helped me to to come out of this and to see a light at the end of the tunnel because now the power was not in someone else's hand now the power was in my hand i realized that i had power again because for me i felt like i could i couldn't do anything i'm done you know and one thing that i you know my depression led me down that path and and i always perceived depression as something bad but Jim Carrey said something really beautiful that that really brings a lot of perspective into all of this. And he said that depression is your avatar telling you it's tired of being the character you're trying to play. And the character that I was trying to play when I was there was make everyone happy by being this this guy, the successful guy, you know. Don't don't show any weakness because weakness uh, don't show any vulnerability because that's a weakness and that's not good you know and you'll you'll disappoint people. But then I realized that that was just one way of living your life. It was not the way. It was one way. And I realized that I was not I was not my story. I was just playing this 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 character, this avatar, this way of being Mario. And you know when I broke free from that. I broke free from so many things in my life. And, and the, the amount of times that people that knew me told me, I don't even recognize you anymore. You know, and the, I, that used to actually hurt me. I was like, oh, wow. That's a, now I'm like, that's, that's bloody amazing. You know, because I actually managed to reinvent myself, uh, myself multiple times. How sad would it be if I just stuck with that same in the, uh, character, that same avatar uh, back then when I was there? And you know, it made all the sense to me then, then to 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 grow out of that, like the like the the butterfly that comes out of the caterpillar, and mm-hmm. it was this this rebirth, you know. But before the rebirth comes death, and the depression and the suicide that was my ego dying because it no longer it was no longer true because all of a sudden I saw that you know there's another way of being successful, and that caused my old way of holding on to what success is to die and it was good that it died and out of that death came the new mario the the much happier healthier imp- more impactful and way more successful mario than ever before it's like jesus christ you died and you rose from the dead <clears throat> yes now i got a question to ask about you know this t- touchy subject about suicide you know you got a lot of it happening especially in the western world with young adults now um what what is something you would say to that young child um and and the reason why i say that is this so social media is wonderful you connect with a wonderful wonderful people out there so a uh, quick story which i was kind of blown by, back by it but um I was on uh, Instagram and, you know, someone DM me, direct message or a PM personal message me. And, you know, I 
I'm not going to say the person's name for con- confidentiality reasons, but they message me and uh, I'm like, oh, okay, great. You know what? Um, you know, what I need to do to have anxiety and depression as an example. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? Uh, you know, I don't want to go back and forth with message. I'd rather connect with somebody live, right? So I says, hey, look, you know, go to my website. I can, let's discuss this. How can I help you? What's going on, right? Because people coin terms, say these terms and phrases, but don't know what it really means. So we scheduled a call and uh, kind of find out it was a young teenager. I mean, below 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really powerful to know that with social media and believe you can change and help how powerful was this this young adult. I mean, young young teenager reached out to me and it's like, hey. Um, I need I need some help with anxiety and depression. And, I, and obviously, I'm going to ask the empowering question. What does it mean to you? Because I have no idea what it means. Right? I can look up the web, uh, dictionary version of it. But it really came down to that he doesn't think he's worthy. Yeah. Or this person think they're worthy. And they already have programmed in their mind. When they meet someone the first time, this person is going to judge me. They don't like me. Something's wrong with me. I, I won't be able to succeed. Mm-hmm. And, but the powerful thing about that is that because he's a young kiddo, I, I call it. He says, I need help. I'm, I'm going to reach out to somebody. And so as we talk about suicide, what would you say to those people that are going through difficulty? Because it's really difficult to reach out for help. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't taught as a kid to reach out for help. It's like, no, you figure it out. You make it happen. But what would you say to those people out there that actually need help? Mm. That's a great question. And then I believe there's no one answer because just like you said, You know, everyone makes up their own meaning and a general answer to solve one one problem is is difficult in this point. What I would say is usually with depression, there is something connected to to the past, something that you're not willing to accept, something that you're not willing to forgive, something that you're not willing to let go of. And I think what I'm seeing more than any, every anything today in, in today's youth is, you know, I run uh, regular mentorship um, groups um, with uh, young entrepreneurs. I just completed one um, with six six young entrepreneurs. Uh, we worked together for four and a half months, and it was the most beautiful thing to see, you know. And what they all shared with me was like the most powerful lesson that I shared among the most powerful was acceptance you know, is, is that it's, that it's okay to, to feel a certain way. It's okay to feel depressed, by the way. It's not wrong. Not at all. It's totally fine. It's totally okay. Because I believe, so, and this was also my part, the, the reason why many people struggle with it, many people suffer from it, I think is a better way to describe it, is because you are in resistance to it. You tell yourself that I shouldn't have this. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't be thinking this way. I shouldn't be going going through this way. I should already have my life figured out by this time. And my first invitation is for, uh, before you do anything is accept that. Accept that you're feeling depressed. Accept that you're having suicidal thoughts. And acceptance does not mean you give in to them and then you say you give up and say that's it. Acceptance just means that you accept the experience of what's happening in the moment. The moment you do that, you stop fighting against yourself. That gives you more room to breathe. That gives you more room to have clarity. Because underneath the, the, the anger, the sadness, even the depression, is usually that inner child that's screaming, for, screaming to be heard or to be seen. And by us not being authentic, meaning we're showing the mask, which is what I did for a long time, is we're keeping it alive. And... The fear usually falls away when we put it out in the, into the open, you know, we say, yeah, you know, I'm afraid that this is going to happen. That's what I'm feeling right now. That's going through me. And the moment you do that, that fear no longer has a controlling grip over you because you just put it in front of you and say, yeah, that's what it is. That's the truth. That's right now my experience of life. And it's okay to have that. And I think if you just start there, there's a lot of, of, of progress and growth that you can make to give you more of a sense of inner control and stability. It, it goes back to that word. I should not, I should be doing this. I should be feeling, I should, I yeah, should, exactly. I should, I should. <laughs> and our what if, what if it goes back to that. It should be not feeling this way. Well, it's okay to feel that way. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you put on this mask and you pretend to be this person that you're not, but deep down you're dying. Right. And I like how you said that it is okay. And it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to be that way. And it's whenever you're ready. Because not, unfortunately, not everyone will have the awakening that you did. I don't know how soon that was for you, but for some, it could take long, for a long time. And it is unfortunate that for some, they may never wake up from that. And they may never have that kind of awakening and they just give up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, it, and right now with the, you know, with the youth nowadays, it's just getting, it's just younger and younger. And I think, right. I don't want to assume, but for you, um, when you went through that, was it around high school, college years? Um, no, I was, uh, I was 21, 22. So I was out of, um, out of school at that point. But yeah, I mean, if, is, is that the age that nowadays, uh, kids go to high school? Um, high school is around starting at around 14 and oh, then okay. all the way through 18. But, you know, it's those years, the, um, starting high school all the way through, let's say mid twenties is when they, I, I think a lot of it, you know, the young adults go through that is because they don't know where to, to put themselves. They don't know who they are. And I think that's the time that it's a very fragile um, age because you're still trying to figure yourself out. And this could be because in your case could be pressure, you know, from the family, from the society, and you're still trying to figure out who, who am I, who do I want to be? Yeah. And, and, you're, and, you're, yeah, and you're looking to role models that still haven't figured out who they are, aka right. our parents. You know, we yeah. we think that you once you become parent or you become an adult, you all of a sudden have it figured out, but you do not, <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> I, I would even say you have less figured out because you you bury all of that with being busy. You know, oh, I got so many things to do. Oh, you know, I'm so busy right now. Is that like busy doing what? Busy escaping from the fact that you still don't know what you're doing here. And that I think you can see, you know, and then the older you get, the more, uh, as a general way of speaking, the more inauthentic people become because it's so scary when you are like 30, 40, 50, and you still haven't figured it out. Because also me saying haven't, having, having to having it figured out is not a must. You don't need to figure it out. That's another trap that people fall into now with personal development. You know, I get a lot of clients that come to me and say, Mario, you know, I still don't know my thing, you know, my one thing. I said, like, what, what do you mean? What's the one thing? Yeah, my life's purpose. And I said, like, what is that? You know? And so it's another another story that, that society is creating now that you now have to have a life purpose and you got it all figured out and all of that. It's another thing. It's another scarcity mindset. It, it's just more, it sounds better. You know, it's more elevated. And now people fall again into that. And then you have these people that go from one seminar to another seminar to another seminar and still don't get it. That it's all at the end of the day, all about acceptance because there's nothing to figure out. Everything in the abundance mindset, everything that you need and everything that you can ever have in life, you already have. And you already, it's already available to you. You know, meaning if someone looks for confidence and they come to me and say, Mario, oh, I just, I just wish I had more confidence and I could do this, you know, then I could start my business. And then, you know, I take them through some exercises and then all of a sudden I ask them, so how do you feel? Oh, I feel so good. I feel so confident. I said, interesting. Where did that come from? So, yeah, you know, we got to found it out in the session here. I said, yeah, but where did it come from? Oh, it came from me. I said, oh, and where has it always been? Yeah, inside of me. I said, interesting. Did you have to do anything for it? Did you have to go outside and, you know, build a business so that it comes out of you? No. I said, what did you have to do? Well, I just shifted my perspective on, and, and, and suddenly it was there. And that's the point, you know. It's always there. And you come into the world with everything that you need. And all you need to do is accept it. Accept that this is who you are and this is available to you. And, and your life will align itself in a, in a way that's natural and authentic. Yeah, because you know why sometimes it's e the easiest way is it's easy to just run away from it and not deal with it. Right. And that's why acceptance is always the hardest thing for, for a lot of people. So now the question is, you've had your awakening. You woke up from all that. You're, you're striving now and you're driven. So question is, your niche is women. Why women? Mm, great question. Uh, that's a, one of my favorite questions. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
you know how a lot of women have a dream of owning their business or you know maybe taking the one that they have to the next level but somewhere along the line they get stuck and i know this because growing up i've been listening to the women in my own family say all these limiting beliefs such as i don't have the experience or why would people listen to me or i don't even know where to begin and it just broke my heart so that led me to start a coaching business which is specifically designed to help ambitious women because the women in my family were very ambitious um, and not only develop a confident mindset where they can believe in themselves, but also the strategies they need to overcome any sort of obstacle that they would encounter along the way as a result of having those re limiting beliefs. And, you know, I think that the world needs more empowering women. Why? Because... When you look at men and women, and now I'm going to move it a little bit into the spiritual realm, you know, we, we both carry um, feminine and, and, and masculine energies within us. The, the masculine part is the, the structure, the logic, the, you know, the getting things done. Let's, call, let's make it that. And men have a more natural tendency to be connected to their egos. And if we look at human history, most... Of the, all of the suffering that we have created in the world comes from the ego. It's all coming from the scarcity mindset. I'm not enough and there is not enough. Therefore, I have to fight for my peace. You know, I got to protect it. You know, I got I to gotta attack them before they attack me because there's not enough to have. You know, we got to be careful with that. The feminine on the other side is about emotions, is about healing, is about uh, intuition and When I look at the world today and also looking at my own path, what I believe we need nowadays is healing because we need to come together because we have all the resources, we have all the ideas, we have all the people, but for some reason it's not, it still hasn't clicked. Why is that? Because I believe in the male-dominated energetic world, which is both men and women, because if you look at many women in the business field, they have a very strong tendency to the masculine. Because obviously, you know, the, the business world is largely driven by us men. And so in order to play the game, you adapt to the game. So a lot of women then uh, have a tendency to fall into their masculine energy and then become very rigid, become, become very head orientated, and they don't allow feelings to come forth. And if you don't feel what needs to be felt, you don't have the space to heal it. And that's, I, th I think, where women today have a unique opportunity to step up as what I call heart-driven leaders, to embrace their emotions and make it part of who they are and their story. And when you do that, when you can learn to embrace your emotions as allies, as messengers of wisdom, you tap into your intuition. And that's where all of the most beautiful, amazing ideas come from. Even not just women, but, but look at men like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is very connected to his feminine side. And that's why he was so amazingly creative in seeing that vision and building Apple. And so my personal experience and what I think uh, we need in the world led me to this path where I'm now, which is all about empowering women in the, in the business field. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Did you ever read a book? I forgot the author. It's called Conscious Business. Uh, no, I have not. I'm going to write that down. There's one also by, uh, it's called uh, a moment, one moment of choice, subconscious so business and a moment of choice. Oh, okay. You hit something that made sense. So people don't think businesses are alive. People don't think, you know, your business is alive. You know, I, I don't mean in terms of oh, you're making money, you're seeing clients, you know, you have a payroll or whatever. No, that's, that's, the old idea of a business that's an old mindset right businesses are alive because there are feelings there are environments and they're alive because people are alive within the, in those businesses right. and they teach you now we're going to a new ram that's why we see a lot of upheaval in in the world because more people are become more consciously aware of yeah. things are not fulfilling Oh man, I got some motion. I make more money. Oh my God, I, I can't see my family anymore. I can't go on vacation. I'm always stressed. And I gain, I gain you know, 20, 30 pounds because it, it, your thought was if I got this, this promotion or this job, I get the money. But in reality, businesses are alive because they're alive by people. And people need to be more in touch with their feelings, yeah. more in touch with the creative side, more in touch with things that provide them energy. Like, 
our environment around you, the trees are alive. Yeah, of course they can grow tall, they can grow short, whatever, but they're alive because years ago, Indians, I mean, Native Americans, they were alive with their environment. Our environment is alive. So more we become consciously aware of our feelings, more intuitive to what's going on around us, but with ourselves first, is yeah. more we can bring everything around us alive and yeah. give back. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so much. I, I love what you just said there. And, you know, I think the feminine is what brings our connection to nature back in because we're in, we're in, we're in, we're at war with ourselves because we believe we are somehow separate from nature. Oh and, my God. Amen. And it, it's, it, it just blows my mind every time people come and say, we need to save the world. We need to save the environment, you know, from, from, from humans, this disease. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, we're just, we are as much as a tree as a, as a, as we are an ant or an elephant, right? We just look different, but we're, we're made of the same stuff. We come from this earth. We are all in this interconnected, interclosed system that when, that's why, you know, when you cut down a tree, it's not just like, oh, there's a, there's, you know, the, the tree is not there anymore. Well, so what? We'll just grow a new one. There's a whole ecosystem that's affected. You know, trees communicate with one another through mycelium, through underground stru uh, a, a network like a, that operates like a human brain. You know, and the, the ego is, is all about separation and disconnection because it's driven by fear. And the, the feminine is driven by, that we, as we said, you know, by love, by intuition, by connection. And, in, and it, to some people, when they first get into it, and the same as me, you know, it's like, oh, it's like fluffy talk. It's like up in the clouds. Come on. We, what's the, what about <laughs> the bottom line? You know, come on. We got to make money. We got to fulfill deadlines. And I'm like, exactly. And that's exactly why you should in, uh, embrace the feminine because there's no way you're going to have a transformation in life, a lasting transformation or break a pattern unless you are allowing yourself to feel that emotion. Because the story is kept alive in the suppress suppression of the emotion. The reason you cannot express yourself confidently on, on online as a social media uh, marketer, brand, whatever, a coach, whatever you do there, is because you're not willing to feel the deep sadness, the shame that was created when you were bullied in high school. You know, and it's the, you're, you're locked in there. And that's why... That's why I also love working with women because women are much more open to going there. With men, what we do is like, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, run what your mate is saying to me. It makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. Totally get it. I'm going to go home, <laughs> think about that. And then, um, yes, it'll be done. And then next you day. Yeah, man up. <laughs> uh, exactly. Right? Yeah. And nothing yeah. happens. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing happens. You no. know what? My coaching practice, I work more with women because they're front. I mean, they they get involved with the emotion. They get involved with uh, everything. And that's the exactly. beauty right there is that we got to release that freaking energy. Like when I study metaphysics, um, it, it, energy is there. It's like you talk about going into, um, a room, people feel it. If you ever been in a room, like, man, something's odd about this room. I can slice it with a knife, like a cake. Cause it's so thick with negativity. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing. People don't understand that, you know, most men are like, yeah, you know, okay. I need to have a goal and I need to set my goals and, you know, I need to have X done, Y done, Z done, and I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Then what next? Oh, well, it, 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 because if you really knew about your, if you come to me and you already have a set goal or you already have your goals, then why haven't you achieved them? If you already know what you want, you should achieve it, but you haven't. That's why you come to me because you're not consistent at setting your goal because you're not connected with trauma, with, with feelings, you know, with, with all that in, in deep stuff and let it go. Because we're only so big. If you keep putting more stuff in that canister, it's going to blow up. Yeah, as as a female here, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I look at this as um, I've always had this yin yang, um, a vision of a yin yang is what I've always had. So I actually got a tattoo of that as a reminder for me. I've always been in touch with the yin yang. So you know, the yin yang, the black side of that is I look at it as the masculine side, the badass side in me, mm. and there's a little white dot in there somewhere because that masculine side or that badass in me still has that soft side and that feminine side of me. And then if you look at the white part of it, I said, okay, there's my feminine side, but deep down in that feminine side of me, I still have that little like 
you know, masculine. I'm a badass still, no matter what, right? And I'm curious because women are very emotional and we are at times, most of the time, our open book. We're not, a lot of the women, I don't want to say all women in general, but most are not afraid to show their emotions. Um, it, it'll just come out. Now, there is a view, though, of men do not understand. Men will never understand how we feel because it's different. And I've ran into that situation before where a man will say, oh, we know exactly how you're feeling. And I understand that. But really, women will say, no, you don't, because what we go through is still different from what you're going through. So, Mario, I'm curious, did you have to get in touch you know, on your feminine side now to really understand deep down what women would really feel emotionally and, yeah. you know. Yeah. So what I'll say first is that I don't think I will ever truly fully be capable of understanding what it's like to be a woman simply because I'm not. And there are so <laughs> many biological factors with it. And I would not <laughs> I think it would be a little bit arrogant to say that. It's like, oh, I've done so much work. I know exactly what it's like. No, I don't. You know, I don't have a period. I don't give birth to children um, and run a business at the same time. Oh, my, just the thought of that just overwhelms me and puts me to bed uh, thinking about that. So I have deep, deep respect for that. What I will say, though, is that ever since I have been much more in touch with my emotions and with my vulnerable side and my authenticity, it's become so much easier for me to relate to women and to, to have a, just my relationship with my fiance has been transformed by my willingness to be vulnerable in a raw state, you know, just dropping the pants and just saying, yes, that's what it is at the core. I'm just, I'm just fucking afraid. You know, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm so afraid. I'm, I'm working so hard not to let that be true. And I'm so, you know, I don't know what to do. And, you know, saying these things for a man, I believe, is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. As a man, you don't know what to do. Uh, you're out of control. Holy cow, you know. And so, yes, it's definitely brought me much, much closer to being able to understand women from that perspective. Um, but there's so much more room to grow to, uh, towards. And, 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 you know, quite frankly, vulnerability uh, to this day is still my biggest uh, growth opportunity. Um, I've gone a lot further than I would say than most men, but there's still a lot of untapped potential, which I'm venturing into. I love that. That's mm -hmm. perfect. So all this said, uh, Mario, how can an audience find you and, and how can they connect with you? There's a man or woman listening to this and they're struggling or there's a woman that's trying to start a business. Where can they find you? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ron. That's a good question. So I would say the best way to connect with me is my Instagram because I'm, I'm there. I'm quite active there. I create a lot of content, a lot of free stuff, value for people. Um, and the name is just my, my name, uh, Mario Lanzarotti. And at this point, I'm really looking only to work with, with women. So if you are a woman and you have a business currently and you want to take it to a, another level, you want to really spice it up, you really want to align yourself with a, with a business that works for you so that you don't have to constantly hustle and uh, you feel maybe that promoting yourself, marketing yourself out, uh, online in the way that you really want to is difficult for you. I can definitely help you with that, you know, and even, and even if you don't have a business, but you are ready to start one and you've always wanted to create that freedom for yourself and that impact also to, to make on other people, then I'm definitely someone that um, can help you. And, you know, I'm always open for a chat. I'm not that kind of coach that once you reach out to, Hey, you've got to buy all my products. And if you don't, your life is going to end. You know, I don't, I'm not that pushy manipulative type. Um, uh, I'm really all looking to 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 have a, a possibility chat is what I call it and to see if we vibe and if we vibe then we can take it to another level and if not no hard feelings uh, we can remain friends. I love that. Nice. Okay. So, I always ask our guests what is one sentence specifically can be a takeaway for our audience? Like what do you want to say to our audience before we end our podcast? 
Oh, wow. That's a great question and a difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> so many, huh? <laughs> yes. It's always my thing. That's why I love podcasts because I can talk so much. And, I, and Instagram for me has been a challenge and also an opportunity because, you know, when you only have like 15 seconds, you're like, oh, God. They cut you off when you're getting to the good part. <laughs> exactly. So the one, the one, one sentence that I want to say, okay, let me center, let me center myself here for a moment. <sighs> you already have everything that you need inside of you in order to live the life that you've always dreamed of, and without being spiritual or making it sound beautiful stop being so hard on yourself please you're you're such an amazing gift you're such a miracle just the fact that you can feel and think and then touch and smell is just a wonder of of life and, and a creation of god consciousness the universe whatever you believe in and, you know and I'm, I'm i'm so happy that you took the time to listen to this and then you stayed with us until the very end because if you did it means something and what it means is that you are one of the few people in the world that is dedicated to making a difference to growing outside of who you currently think you are and becoming of more use to humanity so i deeply deeply want to thank you and think you are an absolute rock star Ooh, I like that. You have already Amazing. everything that you need, right? To That's live, what you said. To live, to live the life that you love. To live the life that you love. And I really love that. Like, I, honestly, Mario, I felt that. Um, and one last thing. What's one thing that you'd want to tell women? One thing that I want to tell women. Yes. Hmm. That's your niche, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who you are is more than okay. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Mm -hmm. Who you are is more than okay. Yes. I like it. The I only caveat that to that, I always ask, but do you believe it? Do I believe what? No. So I, I'm basically saying... I believe everything you said because I know I have all the power and everything I'm doing is okay. I'm where I should be right now. I'm trusting the process. But for someone listening to it, they might, may not be able to see that. They don't believe they have everything they need. So you got to ask them the question. So those are listening. If you have everything you need already inside you, what Mario just said, another question, ask yourself, do you believe it? Yeah. And if not, what stops you from believing it? <laughs> Exactly. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mario, it has been a pleasure listening to your story, listen to your um, niche, listen to what you're going through. And coming from a guy, I had exactly everything you went through. Uh, I talked about this before on other podcasts about me getting steroids because I want that big body, uh, going to debt because I'm trying to impress these women because I want to be this guy that's flashy, he can buy the drinks, he's doing this, he's smart, he's intelligent. But deep down inside, I was broken, right? So it's like Humpty Dumpty set on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. That's a kind of rhyming story here in America. But, you know, thank you for sharing our story because there's hope for humanity and there's hope by co-creating your own life. And there's hope because when you share your story, you heal yourself and you also help the next person out. So you pay it going forward. So I want to say again, thank you for everybody out there for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. If you want to be a guest or you want to make a comment, Please go to lifeshuffle.com on sorry life's a shuffle on Facebook, make a comment or go to www.lifesashuffle what a s.com and connect with Glory and I there and give be a special guest. Thank you for listening. Yes, again, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle and Mario, um thank you for sharing your story and your journey. Um to us and to our listeners, it's a wonderful wonderful story. Um yeah, thanks for coming on. And again, this is Gloria, your mindful.